Welcome to the AME Food Testing Show. Today's topic, transparency along the food supply chain. Today's guest, Barbara Levin. She is the Safety Chain Software's Senior Vice President of Marketing and Customer Community. She's a frequent speaker and publisher in the ERP and Software as a Service community. Barbara is best known for working with customers to increase understanding of the role technology plays in meeting strategic business initiatives. At Safety Chain, she's focused on building awareness throughout the food safety and quality community. She strives to implement innovations such as food safety chain management. Her mission is to help companies stay ahead of the growing complexities of global enforcement of food regulations and requirements. Now, welcome with me, Barbara Levin. Barbara? Hi, Andy. Thanks for having me again. Well, you know, today's topic is a fascinating topic. Can you start off with a general discussion of what is transparency when it comes to food supply management? Mm -hmm. Sure, Andy. Uh, you know, when we're talking about transparency and visibility, we're, we're, we're simply speaking about uh, the practice of being able to show um, all safety and quality um, activities, test results, corrective preventive actions, um, suppliers, basically anything that has uh, that has come into play with producing and and selling and providing food and being able to show all of the activity and any events uh, surrounding that food. Uh, you know, today the, the practice in the industry is really transparency, you know, one step up, one step back, uh, being able to show, um, you know, where something came from, what, what we've done with it, um, you know, where, what were the test results for safety tests, et cetera. Um, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm here to say that um, I think that we need to push transparency uh, further. Uh, but but overall, we're really we're really talking about you know the the so-called you know opening up the book to to see uh, where food came from, what it was done, what was done with it, um, and then where it went, and you know in the end where did it go? Whether that's uh, on, you know obviously on somebody's plate for the most part. Barbara, that's a very much on point topic. Considering all the ingredients that go into our modern food products, what are the various areas in which transparency and visibility come into play? Hmm. So you know, and uh, I, I, I think I, I think if we were on TV right now, there'd be one of those little captions under under me that says uh, these opinions are my own and don't necessarily represent. Uh, uh, anyone else, but you know, I, I think that there's a couple of key areas. The first one I think is just maybe overall food safety practices. And the I, I was at a conference recently, and one of the topics of discussion was should food safety be competitive? Um, and you know, while while I think everybody respects that, um, you know, companies want to do everything they can to to gain a competitive edge. I think one area where transparency can come into play is in food safety. I don't believe food safety should be competitive. Um, I, I think that if there, um, if you have a practice or if you found a way to to make uh, food safer, that should be an open book. Um, I, I think if you've had a problem, that should be an open book. Um, so, so I think that that's that's one area. Um, I, I think that the next area is, is with suppliers. You and I spoke about this uh, recently, Andy, the, you know, the foreign supplier verification program that's part of FISMA um, or supply chain controls. You know, even though, even though those laws say one forward and one backward, I, you know, sometimes I think you need to ask, do you know who your supplier's suppliers are? Um, you know, if, if somebody gets sick, I, I you know, I, I don't think it's I, I, I don't think it's okay to say, well, hey, you know, I, I trust the guy that I got it from. Um, so, so, so I think you know, having more transparency 
of, you know, the supplier, supplier, supplier. Um, you know, think about how easy, how much easier that that could be then to do things like root cause analysis and traceability. You know, you and I know that there are times where, you know, people are getting sick and sometimes it can take months to to be able to find that. So I think that's an area. Um, I think overall food safety and quality management, um, you know, auditors see everything. You know, if you had a bad test result and you caught it and you put a, a corrective action in place and then a preventive control in place, um, I mean, there's nothing to hide there. So I so you know, auditors see it. Why not? You know, why not have others be able to see that? Um, you know, why not government agencies? Uh, maybe that will help government agencies um, to, to audit you less <laughs> if, if they can look and see, you know, what, what you're doing. Um, and then, you know, I, I think retail and food service companies are going to start to demand it. You know, there's there have been outbreaks and, you know, those of us that are in industry, you know, we read all the blogs and we, we know what what supplier or what farm or wherever the product uh, came from that caused the problem. The public doesn't know that. The public's getting mad at that restaurant that served it to them um, where they are no longer shopping, you know, at the retailer. And so I think these folks are going to start to demand it. They're, this whole, you know, trusted, trusted uh, you know, importer, they're, they're going to want to make sure that they have bases covered. I, I think that's the trend. And, you know, the last is the consumer, right? I mean, you know, we're all hearing about, uh, you know, apps out there that, that let you go and, you know, be in a grocery store and, and scan the uh, the SKU on something and kind of see where it came from. So that was – I hope I didn't just take up all of our time with that really long-winded answer, but, but those are the key areas. Well, Barbara, certainly I could see the application for all of the areas you've mentioned – for all of the interested parties involved in food to be able to trace back where it came from and the, some kind of confidence when that happens. Mm -hmm. What are the challenges that food producers and others in the supply chain face now? Mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, when, when we started out, you mentioned that today that, you know, and today, there's ingredients coming from everywhere. I spoke with one of our customers yesterday. They have 5,000 suppliers. Um, and again, you know, those suppliers probably have suppliers and, 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 and so forth and so forth. And I think that is the challenge, whether you are a food manufacturer or co-packer or, or a broker or anybody, is um, it's so complex. There's there's so many moving parts. There's 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 uh, you know ingredients coming in. There's finished product going out. And for the most part today, food safety is, is still quite manual. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of technology that's been put in place for supply chain controls, things like purchasing and inventory management and you know distribution, but but, you know, we're, we're just now starting to see automation in the industry. So when you have uh, a company that has that many suppliers and, you know, multiple plants and multiple locations, it, it's, it's very difficult to provide that kind of transparency and visibility because things are manual. Or if there's information in systems, very often the systems don't talk to each other. And so, you know, when, when you've got to you know, go to 50 filing cabinets in, in 50 different locations and uh, go, you know, go to the spreadsheets and the PDFs and, and the binders. It, it's, you know, it's very hard to, to, to provide that kind of transparency and visibility. Barbara, what kind of tools can help someone with 8,000 or even 50 vendors Mm -hmm. that are providing products that go into their eventual finished product. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you know, I mean, you know, anytime you're speaking to me, you know, technology is going to come into the conversation sooner or later. And I, and I really do think, you know, that's, that's kind of the key now um, that, you know, there's a lot of food safety and quality assurance technology, you know, that's gaining, you know, mass 
adoption and popularity these days that, you know, take all of the information that's coming in on safety and, and, and you know, they analyze it. It can be analyzed in real time. It, um, you know, it, it can send alerts out when there's problems. Corrective actions can be documented. And, you know, and, and companies are starting to do that to some extent. They're starting to ask their suppliers to um, to use these solutions so that all of the information is coming into a central repository. And, and that's, you know, probably the the biggest step um, is, is is making food safety and quality uh, an electronic automated process versus versus the manual process. I, I, I just don't think it's really feasible anymore. Um, even for the one step forward, one step back, you know, manual is, is, is very difficult. And if you're going to try to go further, I think it's almost impossible. So what you're saying is I can't have it in a binder. And as a corollary to that, I can't have it on a spreadsheet or a Word document sitting on my laptop. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, you can, but again, that if that Excel spreadsheet sitting on your laptop is is not talking to another to another system, um, or if you've got you know all of your food safety folks so busy entering all of that information into those spreadsheets that they're not actually having the time to really analyze it. Um, you know, it's just not a good use of, of time. And, you know, unless the information on your laptop is able to communicate with the information on somebody else's laptop, um, you know, then there isn't transparency. Then there's just two separate systems that don't talk to each other. Well, Barbara, this leads up to the obvious question. What products or services the safety chain offer to help with transparency? Um, you know, safety chain has, has a solution called Food Safety Chain Management, Safety Chain for Food, and it provides a, it provides a lot of the um, provides a lot of the capabilities that we just spoke about. You know, the ability for global suppliers to enter information into the system, the ability to analyze that information in real time to specifications, um, flag alerts if there's a problem so that CAPAs can be taken, corrective preventive actions can be taken uh, in a timely manner. Um, all the information is time and date stamped. And, you know, if, if, if you're having your suppliers use it, and we're starting to see this, right? You know, some of our customers have asked their suppliers to use it who said, wow, you know, I wasn't too happy that you're making me do this, but wow, this is really easy. <laughs> this is much easier. This is a much easier way for us to send you information. And now I've got all of that documentation in that central repository that I sent it to you. Hey, I'm going to make my suppliers use it. So you start to get that that chain. Um, we've got mobile FSQA that uh, allows information uh, to be entered on forms on, you know, iPads and, 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 you know, cell phones and whatnot so that you're, you're not having all the, you know, the pre-harvest folks out in the field and then they have to come back and they have to enter it all into that spreadsheet that's on, that's on your uh, laptop. Um, and, you know, so, so there's some, um, you know, I don't want to spend too much time talking about safety chain. People can go to safetychain.com. But, you know, I, I think there, there's, there's a lot of advantages here. And and I'll add our software, like any software, is, you know, we allow we have customers that do want that transparency. We have other customers that say no. You know what? I found the problem. I corrected it. Um I you know, and so it's really always going to be up to a company, but you know, I personally I, I think the benefits are are the potential benefits could be interesting. I mean, and you know, this is gonna all be, you know, somewhat down the road, but you know, everybody's talking about FDA and audits and the FDA demand for the records. And, you know, if you've got, if, if, if you are getting all of your information electronically and you show that you were able to catch your problems and you were able to correct them and you were able to correct them before the product was shipped, um, why wouldn't you want the FDA to be able to look at that? Maybe that will mean that you can get audited less. You know, the FDA... You know, they're, 
they, um, I, I've heard talk that because, you know, with FISMA, FDA can come in and demand your records. Well, people are saying, well, I'm just not going to, you know, keep records anymore. Well, that's just silly, <laughs> of course. And, you know, people know that uh, that problems are going to happen. So, you know, they're going to they're gonna come down to you a lot harder if you don't have records than if you say, hey, I have this problem. I caught this ingredient. This is what I did about it. Um, and so, you know, and maybe customers. Um, you know, I've heard from some of our customers that, hey, I'm going to give customers a login. They can go in and they can see. You know, they 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 can see uh, their the COA that's coming to them, but they can also see the test results. Again, some don't want to do that. Some want to. Because um, the same thing. Maybe it, you know, gives customers confidence. It's a selling point. This is where food safety can be competitive. Is going and saying, hey, I have this nifty test. Technology that's going to allow you to look anytime you want to. Um, so maybe that that uh, you know helps reduce customer audits. And you know, I think I've ended every single one of our interviews with the same point. You know, in the end, what it's about your brand protection. You know, when there's problems, that you know the people in industry they know. <clears throat> you know, they they know which where it came from, but the consumers don't. You know, consumers they stop buying from that store. Or they stop going to that restaurant, and um, and I think you know the kind of transparency in the end it actually helps protect your brand um, because it's showing that you know you are going above and beyond, and that you have nothing to hide. Well, Barbara, as I listen to you, I'm thinking of a word, and I call it democratization, and that's making information available to all people, and as that happens. And it's not just for the giant companies, from what I'm hearing you say. It's from the smaller companies. And when you're talking about iPads and iPhones, that's at the cutting edge of our general, generational evolution. We're actually moving toward mobile computing. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of when I worked at NASA, uh, there was a theory and there's a statement that said that if you buy a talking greeting card, you know, those recorded greeting cards, that you have more technology in your hands that's going to end up in the trash can that then set the men to the moon. <laughs> and as we look at these portable devices, you're talking about taking computing power and putting it right in your hand. Sure. The consumer scanning a barcode or a manager walking through a plant and entering information that is then used all throughout the chain. Mm -hmm. Barbara, can you summarize for our group and again, we are professional managers interested about issues that relate to food safety. Summarize for us transparency along the food supply chain and how important it is. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, I, again, I think that give, given, given the complexities of today's global food supply chain and given the fact that, you know, if, if you – if you are selling food, um, you know, your, your, your brand is, is, is really at risk. Um, if you're a manufacturer, you, you need to know more these days than just, just the information that's coming from your supplier. You know, you, you owe it to your company to know who your supplier suppliers are. Um, because, you know, in, in the end, um, we're all responsible. Every, you know, if, if somebody gets sick, Everybody who touched that food is responsible. I mean, we see some of the lawsuits coming out right now with some recent events, and everybody's being sued. The auditors are being sued. The retailers are being sued. Uh, you know, the growers are being sued. Um, you know, I think, I think that, you know, if we're doing the right things, we should have nothing to hide. I don't think anybody expects um, manufacturers and producers and whatnot to not have problems. That's just impossible. Um, even if you, even if you have complete control, uh, there's only, you know, there's certain areas where you don't have control. You know, if you are if you are a, a grower of produce, you know, you don't have control over certain things, um, animal intrusion, things like that. So. You know, if we're doing the right things and we're putting the right processes in place and, you know, we're catching, we're using technology to catch problems and we can document what we did out of them, uh, then, I, then I think overall that's going to be better for a brand 
Um, and, and I think, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a paradigm shift in the industry, and I and I think we're just going to start to see it more. I, it, again, I think the people who serve food in restaurants and sell food in grocery stores are going to start to demand that transparency, whether or not the government does. And I think it's I, – I'd love to have this conversation again in about a year and <laughs> see where it all is. <laughs> well, Barbara, I think you've encapsulated it, the issues between food producers, consumers, and the government and the entire generation that we live in, we have an open society. Computers and the Internet have forced us to become more transparent. I'd like to thank you for your time today, Barbara, and allow you any final comments before the conclusion of this interview. Um, no, I think, I, I, I think that's probably enough of uh, Barbara Levin opinions for the day. And so uh, thank you, Andy. Uh, it's fun as always to chat with you. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye now.